breathing. Huge fan. Been doing it my whole life. This is especially important to me because I've got asthma. I've had it since I was seven. There are times where it affects me and there's times where it's manageable. I have to make sure that I'm doing this and breathing properly. I'm gonna teach you guys about the proper mechanics of normal breathing, of how it works, and there's different stages of breathing, depends on our exertion, and then how do we incorporate that during running. But before you can do it while you're running, you have to be able to do it correctly when you're standing still, when you're sitting. To make it as simple as possible, you've got your lungs. They're responsible for pumping oxygen throughout your body. As your intensity goes up, your need for oxygen demand goes up, the lungs have to deliver more oxygen. So what happens is we're gonna simplify this as a two different mechanisms. As your diaphragm, that's just your basic employee, your worker, and the manager, that's your upper traps. The reality is there's more muscles that make up this backup or this accessory muscles, but this is the most common and easiest to understand. So what happens is on a day-to-day -day work, we have here is the intensity, 100% being sprinting, here at rest. Normal breathing mechanics, it's all pressure differentials. Your diaphragm, which is under your lungs, it goes down. When that happens, it changes the pressure differential in your lungs to lower. Atmospheric pressure, high to low, air comes in. When it goes, the diaphragm goes up, changes the pressure, higher, higher than atmospheric, and it goes out. So this whole diaphragmatic breathing, diaphragm goes down and up, air comes in and out. What we see is when the diaphragm is working, as that diaphragm goes down, as the air and the lungs fill up, my stomach goes out, out. And then as I breathe out, my stomach goes in. So it's a little bit backwards than we're normal thinking. The diaphragm, the worker, is always on. What should not be always on is the traps and the manager. What happens is if you've got an uptight manager, always involved, always micromanaging, they're gonna be involved in the everyday stuff, the lower level stuff, and they don't need to be, it's not meant to be. This number is different for everybody, but arbitrarily, we're gonna say once your intensity gets 65%, that's when the manager comes involved. But when the manager comes in, when the upper traps come in to help, the diaphragm doesn't stop. The biggest mistakes people do are two things. One, they're using their traps for the manager at lower levels, not efficient. The second thing, is they're never really kind of emphasizing this diaphragmatic breathing. They're always just breathing with their chest. So how this happens, this plays out in the clinic, is we're breathing with our chest and our shoulders, and constantly those muscles get tight. We're on our phones, we're heads forward. We get so tight, this is how we, we are. We can't turn, we can't look, we can't expand our rib cage. We don't get good air in and out. So here's how this is gonna work out. You're gonna use this ACE bandage. I know you thought it was a waist trainer, while you're running as a drill, but before that, we've got to master it when you're still. Standing, you're gonna have one hand on your chest, one hand on your stomach. What you should feel, normal breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, my stomach goes out and in. My chest is not rising upwards, it's going out because it's filling with air, but I'm not using my traps to breathe. Once you feel like you can successfully breathe in and out through your stomach, through your diaphragm, you're ready to go outside. You're gonna take an ACE bandage. You're gonna put it about one finger breath above your belly button. You're gonna go around and tuck it. You want it tight that it's not restricting you to be able to expand, but enough that you feel some counter pressure. And what you're gonna do is when you're running, you're gonna breathe in and out, pushing your stomach out into that band. What should happen is the faster you go, the higher the intensity, what it should look like when these do come on, this doesn't stop like we said, is the stomach will go out, then the chest will come up. Chest goes down, stomach. That's not the main purpose of what I want you to think about. I just want you to stop using your traps at lower levels. And also when we're using our arms, this will be another topic later on in performance, making sure it's not up and down using those. Shoulders down and back. You can use the same band around your low back. Practice the arm swing of drying off your low back. But because what you wanna do so you don't get dependent is you have this on, you go run, maybe your first time doing it, you keep it on the whole time. Next day, two days later, you run again. Every quarter mile, every minute, have the band on, practice breathing into it, slide it down around your hips. Practice, pull up, okay. So that way you kind of learn the motor learning to get the hang of it, of proper diaphragmatic breathing. So 
I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys have some aha moments. Practice it in sitting, then standing, then running, and let me know if you guys have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Dr. Matt Minard, and I'm so passionate about helping you run safer. If you found this video helpful, if you could please subscribe and share it with your friends, I'd be forever grateful. I have shorter form content on my Instagram, Learn to Run, and then longer stuff here, more lecture based, because I understand we come to different platforms for different reasons. So follow me over on Instagram if you want the short and sweet, and follow me on here if you want the longer breakdowns.